Like some of you possibly, the meaning of Christmas for me has changed over the years. As a child, it was full of excitement and wonder at the presents being left in one night, the new party dresses and the late nights to attend carol services. As I grew older, the parties were still there and the carol services still made me feel magical and excited. But I recall reaching Christmas Eve one year exhausted, exhausted from the carol services, the church Christmas musical performances and open house where my parents opened the manse up to the church family for a day to come in and join with us with shortbread, mince pies and coffee and I went to bed feeling less than Christmassy. You and then came along and the magic returned. The light seemed to dazzle brighter and the excitement was there. I went to bed thinking this is Christmas. Despite knowing the Christmas story from my young age and singing all of the songs every year, it wasn't until as a family one year we decided to do daily devotions at Christmas time that I really began to rethink and search what Christmas really meant to me. I knew Christmas was about the birth of Jesus, but I did not fully comprehend that it was about his love. His love for me that started when God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit imagined me into being in all of my fullness of life. As Anne Voskamp says, I was formed in a huddle of holy hearts. His love which brought into being creation for us to be wowed. Wowed at the new life each springtime. Wowed at the millions of snowflakes, each one different, that bring us so much joy as both kids and adults at this time of year. His love that called out to me in a still, small voice at a time in my life when I felt like all was lost. I love you. I part with you. I have you. Let me carry you. Let me rejoice with you in your restoration. His love to leave glory of heaven and come to earth to identify with me and you. To be born into a filthy, smelly, uncomfortable stable so that he can meet us in our filthy, smelly and uncomfortable sin so that we might see his glory and as Ewan reminded us the other night there, you do not need to be born into a palace to be special. You are special in his love. His love that ultimately led to a cruel death on the cross so that I might stand here today in the knowledge that whoever believes in him may have eternal life, that one day I will sit at his feet with the saints and the angels and sing his praises forever and ever. His love, his unconditional, uncontainable, unending, unbeatable, unfailing, unwrappable love, the true gift that keeps on giving so that we might show his love to others by using the gifts that he has given, showing the kindness and the gentleness to those whom sometimes you feel just don't deserve it. But in his eyes, they do. They are as much a child of God as you and I are. To me, Christmas is about one of the greatest gifts that we could receive, love, his love. And the greatest gift that we can give back is us, our lives, our whole lives. So with the sparkle and the dazzle, the celebrations and the decorations, with every light that twinkles, it reminds me that he came as a baby to give me life and a love that is unexplainable. I pray this Christmas at the end of what has been a very difficult year for many of us in a lot of different ways, that you will know his unconditional, unwrappable love as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. <laughs>